flip that script. That's where the guest gets to ask the host a question. I don't know what you're going to ask. This is a tough one. Okay, you have to roll with the punches when you're doing this kind of work. I love that graphic. I am not going to stop laughing about it. It was the first time I saw it. So, Gene, you're even profiled in the Flip the Script graphic because you were my first. <laughs> I'm, I'm honored. Yeah, definitely. So, listen, guys, Flip the Script basically comes with the host is always asking a question to the guest, but now the guest gets to ask the host a question. I don't know what the questions were. Gene's thrown some rapid fire, great questions before. So, Gene Rossi flipped that script on me. This is a heavy duty global question. You have uh, achieved an epiphany. You used to be a prosecutor who would willingly seek the death penalty. And now today, uh, you have reservations and concerns about the death penalty. What caused your epiphany? I was trying a death penalty case as a prosecutor. Um, and during the course of the case, the victim's family begged us, and for lots of legal reasons, including the fact that Jersey is very difficult to secure an actual execution. In fact, they never executed when the law came out. But the family begged us to stop the proceedings, plead, have the defendant plead guilty to a murder conviction with as long a sentence as possible, which the defense was willing to do. My boss, I was just an assistant prosecutor, I only followed orders, uh, agreed with it. We took it to the attorney general's office. Office, and the attorney general's office refused to allow us to take it out of the death penalty. The argument being that the defendant was white. And if they had taken the, the, the case out of the death penalty, it would affect what they call the proportionality uh, analysis that they do, which basically says more minorities get executed um, than non-minorities. And I found that to be like, wow, that's exactly the point. I mean, we're basing decisions based upon the fact that guy's white, a guy's black. It's just the wrong thing to do. Uh, uh, I'd add to this, Gene, that having a system out there where, you know, there's 161 death penalty cases that have, people have been exonerated. And when you see states that do it so quickly and, and on such different kinds of evidence than we allowed, I just don't feel comfortable that it's, it's, it's getting to the right space. So those were the epiphanies that I had with respect to it. Um, it's the law. It, you got to follow the law. But if you have discretion, when I became the boss, you were going to find it very difficult to have a case. The synagogue case would be one where I would seriously consider, in fact, I would file a death penalty. There you okay. go. Okay, so, Don, flip that script on me. Wow, I wasn't expecting to flip the script. I, I, I didn't make it onto the uh, onto the screen there for, in, the, you, in the intro. You but, do a good job. You I'm make hoping. it on there. You never know. Okay, but in in a case like the one we were just, we'll go back to today's topic. In, in a case like uh, the Love case, where you've tried a great case, the evidence came out the way you wanted it to. Um, are you ever worried going into the death penalty phase about putting too much evidence, uh, too many witnesses on t uh, on on the stand? To, that it might desensitize or, or something might come out that you don't want it to come out exactly the way you thought it would. Um, and you wouldn't get the result that you wouldn't uh, that you expected as a death penalty. Yeah, I, I think that as a prosecutor, I was like, as a trial lawyer in general, worried is the word you used all the time about how my witnesses are coming across, how are they being perceived, am I going too far? Could I put that one witness on when the case is going really clean and really well that can blow up in my face and, and hurt me? So it's kind of a balancing act. I t I take that question and twist it a little bit too with death penalty litigation, especially in more conservative states. And what I mean by that is states where it's harder to get the death penalty and have the appellate division uphold it. Sometimes the appellate divisions will, or the Supreme Courts of these states will look at the kind of evidence that was introduced and say that it was so overwhelmingly prejudicial uh, to the defendant that, and I've had this happen where I've had cases come back where they said, you know, Bianchi was allowed to use bad character evidence in five or six instances. The court granted him the ability to do it. And I think this goes right to your point. But he only used two. So he was doing it because he needed to prove motive. So he only used two out of five instances, which shows that he was using restraint as a prosecutor. And I think courts like to see that. So I do think that everything that you do in a courtroom, and Gene, I don't have to tell you this, and Don, I don't tell you, is tactical. There is not a single word, a, a move, a gesture, a facial expression, a way that I am in a courtroom that is not designed to achieve the result, which is success. Hey, guys, great questions on the first episode formally of Flip That Script and the Long Crime 
Network. Thank you again, whoever made that graphic. It's awesome. So listen, we've got more law and crime for you here. Uh, we have testimony in the Love case that's been introduced with respect to these officers. Um, let's just talk a little bit about that, okay? So they're bringing officers from Memphis up here in Texas. Uh, Gene, do you think they're effective prosecution witnesses? Maybe getting to Don's point, is it becoming too much? I, I respectfully disagree with Don. And here's why. They're trying to show that Mr. Love, uh, once again, it's not his first rodeo. And this person has a pattern of criminal uh, conduct for which he has no reservations or conscience. And I, I couldn't really hear what the officer, the former police officer, was saying about what happened in Memphis. If it's a violent crime that happened in Memphis, that's very bad for Mr. Love when it comes to the death penalty. If it's just a, 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 you know, a relatively straightforward case, he sold drugs, he got money, that may not hurt him for the penalty. But if it involves violence, guns, and things like that, uh, that's really bad for him. Yeah, what are your thoughts, Don? I, I actually sort of agree with Gene in this particular case. It, it, it might actually go down to uh, they, they want to establish that this isn't a one-time thing, that he has a history of being a drug dealer, that he has no... Uh, remorse for guilty things that he's done in the past. So in, in this particular case, because uh, I had to ask a question, so I asked that one to you, and I think it was good for that particular moment. But the in this particular case, I mean, the, the, like I talked about before, I think they are trying to establish that he is. this isn't a one-trick pony sort of situation. Right, right. Well, I mean, this evidence is allowed. As you can see from that shot we have on the camera, there's, there's the picture of the victim, you know, on the stand watching it all, if you will. And uh, it is not going well for Mr. Love. I'll go to the chatters who asked the question, do I think that this uh, is not going to be a death penalty conviction? I would be shocked at this point in time if there wasn't a death penalty conviction in the case. We got more testimony from the Christopher Love trial. Guys, thanks again for Flip That Script. Uh, uh, and I know that you, you each got thrown off a little bit uh, in, in, in the graphic and what happened there, but I appreciate you rolling with the punches. And guys, Pluto TV app, if you can, download it. I just did it the other day. I love it. Channel 640. We're on yet another platform with the Law and Crime Network, but it's all because of you guys and the people in the chat room. I love you. I go on every now and again when I'm not, when I'm on the train going home. Um, you guys ask great questions. So let's look at those two clips. Or actually, let's go to a real quick break. And on the other end, we'll come back with more of the Christopher Love trial. So stay tuned.